it's not a sterile dressing change or it does not have tunneling or something like that where you have to uh, pack the wound. That probably should be done by your nurse. Other than that, um, wound care is appropriate in most cases for the home health aide to do. So let's talk about this. Um, when we are doing um, our uh, wound care, one of the first things we want to do is clean our field and then put a barrier down. Only touching the edges. Of course, you have just washed your hands, as you know, is what you are to do first. If I can get this thing to open for us. There we go. Now, gathering your supplies is very important. You need to gather your supplies before you put on your gloves. Doing your hand hygiene, washing your hands always before getting started on anything is very appropriate. Um, so you're going to put down your barrier and then you're going to gather your supplies and put them on your barrier. I may also put a barrier underneath perhaps like if it's a, a foot or a hand or something uh, of the limb that I am doing the wound care on for the client. I may put a barrier down and then lay their hand or their foot on that as well. But I'm also going to have a separate barrier for my wound supplies. Okay, and it needs to be a clean barrier. You can't just put your wound supplies on the bed sheet. All right. Okay, so I'm going to gather my supplies and I'm going to open it, just touching the edge and dump, and then get rid of that. I also have a trash bag. I usually tie it on to the bed post and pull it open. So when I'm done with things, I can throw it in there. You may also want a red bag, depending on what's going on with that wound. Okay, so let's say I'm doing this kind of a thing, and I want to dump this. There we go. Oh, yay. There we go. It's not a sterile wound, so I'm all right. Not a sterile dressing change. I may do some of these like that and have those available like that and have my tape pulled out and prepared and ready for me. Just the edge like that. And I can even tear it depending on what, how I'm going to be using that. At this point, I'm going to sanitize my hands again and I'm going to put on my gloves. Um, now, let's go over gloving because I have a feeling that some people are probably not doing it correctly. I know a lot of people, um, maybe it's been a long time since you took your CNA class, might need a primer on it. So, this is clean gloving, it's not sterile gloving, that's a totally different technique. So with whichever hand, I'm left-handed, but you know, I've learned how to do things right-handed because it's a right-handed world. Sometimes I don't know I'm doing it backwards, it's just what I do, but however, whichever hand you want to use first to reach into that box of gloves and pull out that glove, that's it. You just pull one glove out, you touch it in one place, you try not to touch it anywhere else on the outside. You limit your touching, okay? So I touched it, you don't know what you're getting, you just pull it out, then you put your fingers, where are my fingers? On the inside, not the outside. Okay, like this, I put my glove on. Now, I put this on weird on purpose so I could show you what happens if you get your glove on whopper jaw. It's all right, it's okay. You do not go like this and try and pull the fingers out and put them on. No, you just leave it be. Then with your gloved hand, with which hand? Your gloved hand. You reach back in the box and you pull out your second glove. Now this one, I can touch on the outside all I want with my gloved hand, but my naked hand, I can only touch on the inside because I am trying to keep the contamination down. Now, see how I do this? Now, this hand can help this hand. See? Now I can fix it and I didn't contaminate it. There. That's the correct way to do clean gloving, right? Now, 
I am ready to do the dressing change. Now, if they already had a dressing on, a dirty dressing that I need to remove, I would go ahead and put a, a uh, barrier underneath whatever, let's say it's their foot. I'd put that barrier under their foot. I would take that dirty dressing off, okay? I would clean the area. Then I would take all of that and throw it away. I would take my gloves off. I would sanitize my hands. Then I'd set up another barrier underneath her foot and another barrier here with my wound supplies. And then I would do the clean dressing. So you're gonna have how many sets of gloves? At least two. One for the dirty, one for the clean. Once the wound is clean, now you have a clean wound. You need to take off those dirty gloves, redo everything again. Okay? That is the correct way to set up your wound field. A couple other things I want to talk to you about is if you are, let's talk, before we do that, let's take off our gloves. Make sure you know how to take gloves off correctly. If you imagine that your gloves are utterly and totally dipped in poo, you'll always take them off the right way. In fact, in class, I make people put chocolate pudding all over their gloves. So it's a visual. Because you know what I see? I see a lot of people doing this when they take off their gloves. Ew. Or this. Ew. Right? No. This is how you would do it. Now, I, I'm, I go on the underside of my hand. Some people prefer this, it's whatever. So, you, but you pinch here, and then you pull back like that. See, I didn't, I didn't get that anywhere on me, did I? Pinch like that. And then in one swoop, I pull this off while I wad it up in this hand. Now I arch my wrist back and I take this finger, go like this, and watch. In one swoop, it's off, and I drop. And then I sanitize my hands or wash my hands again, do hand hygiene again. That's the correct way of taking those off. Now, back to what we were going to talk about. If you have to wrap a leg, like with an ace wrap or with a gauze wrap, you do a figure eight, so you're going up, around, back down, up, around, back down, up, around, like this. But regardless of where the wound is, whether the wound is right at their ankle or an inch from their knee, you always start at the base of the toes. Always. Because otherwise, if you start, let's say that the wound is an inch up from their ankle and you start wrapping there, then the the foot will swell up big. That's why you always start at the base of the toes and go all the way to the knee, regardless of where the wound is on the lower leg, especially if they have CHF, congestive heart failure, or any problems with edema. And even if they don't, it's the correct technique. You always try to limit the amount of tape you use on the skin and really try to get it to be none. The elderly really tend to have very thin skin. It's very delicate, not only that, but tape will, will harm the skin. You can get a new wound just from the tape alone. There are several different wound products that really limit this. It's another thing whether you'll have access to those at the place of your business. So we always try to limit tape. I know I've seen places, I've seen people where they put the gauze on and then they tape, 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 tape around. And then next week you come back and there's a, you can see right where the tape was. It's all raw. Be careful of that. I'd rather see you wrap with gauze and then tape on the gauze, perhaps. Um, boy, I could do a 10 hour long video on wound care. But um, that's all they're calling for in this video. I do have other videos out there and you're welcome to look at them. Um, most of them are on YouTube. I also can go to facilities and do wound care seminars as well. So, all right. 